have to cut? How are we going to make priorities? Yeah, so I think, you know, in the conversation that we've heard here, we have talked about a myriad of different funding formulas, right? And I think that that's one of the issues. So we've talked about the education cost sharing formula. We've talked about magnet schools and magnet school tuition. There are five different magnet school funding formulas. Like, we've talked about charter schools with their own different line item, right? So you've got all of these different kinds of school finance systems. You've got the Alliance District Grants, which are a band-aid for ECS funding. And I think you really need to think about, we think about all of these as all of these separate and different funding streams, but they're really collectively a funding stream for education, right? So I think, you know, if as a state we have decided that low-income children are a priority, we need to think about these funding streams in a more unified way and make sure that we're directing resources to have those Have you really cases. decided that as a state? Because that's why the judge issued his decision. He said you haven't decided that as a state. I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's something that as a state we have to talk about and we have to make a decision about, right? Um, a, a couple of other points I want to hit on, though, particularly in the accountability conversation. So in the accountability conversation we were having, we were really talking about accountability as just a top-down thing, right? What are people going to make us be accountable for? But in a lot of the uh, presentations that I do around the state to community stakeholders talking about school funding, I think there's also uh, a lot of energy from accountability from the, the bottom up, right? And I think first and foremost, our school districts are and should be accountable to the communities and families that they serve. And I think one really important part of that is making sure uh, that those folks who live in our communities have good information about the resources school districts have and about how they're using those resources. So in Connecticut, one of the things you still cannot do, right, you still cannot tell a parent across the state how much money is being spent on a per-pupil basis and my child's individual school, right? We have district-wide per-pupil expenditure numbers. We actually only have them for local public school districts. We don't have them for all different types of schools. So I don't know, you know, what is my child in one elementary school receiving versus another. I also can't compare, you know, what is one district spending on school supplies to what is another similar district spending on school supplies, right? So without this really basic information about how school districts are allocating their resources across their schools and what they're spending their resources on, it's very difficult for those people to whom schools should most be accountable to hold their school districts accountable for how they're using their resources. And that isn't something that I heard as part of the conversation, but I think it's something that needs to be part of any conversation we're having around uh, accountability, and particularly the transparency component of accountability. We talk about accountability, talk about making decisions. I wonder if Gary, when you listen to the legislature discussion, there always is an assumption that you can't raise revenue, that we have to just cut our way out of these budget problems. Do you agree with that assessment? And if not, what would be the different take you would take on it to fund more education? So I, you know, I've sat on uh, appropriations for uh, the entirety of my time in the legislature. Uh, I understand how we got to the conversation of uh, trying to cut our way out, uh, trying to make up for what some people see as uh, spending that, uh, I guess, the legislature in some ways, according to some people, wasn't accountable. Uh, but since I arrived in uh, 2009, um, We've been doing cuts in appropriation. Now, we may have been growing at the same time, which is part of you know, the, what makes it difficult to talk to people and they don't understand what we're talking about when we say uh, we were making cuts but growing. Um, but I think we're at a point where uh, we are cutting in ways that are destructive. I'm not just talking about education. We're cutting in ways that, that, that some pretty important things don't function well anymore. Um, and so I think uh, whether people like it or not, there has to be a conversation about revenue. Now, what exactly those revenues are, that's a conversation to be had. That's an important part of the conversation. It is. What I've heard from people on Len and George's side of the aisle is that they feel one reason, tell me if I'm wrong, guys, that we have these budget problems now is that we created such a reliance on income taxes from Fairfield County with such volatile incomes tied to the financial industry. That's why we keep getting, as Len says, we get this budget deficit that's growing every time we wake up every morning by a few hundred million dollars. Can we still tax more and get the revenue? I don't think that you can get out of this session without doing anything on the revenue side. This is not, again, this is not strictly a, a conversation about education. I just don't think you can do that. Uh, I would invite any of the legislators in the legislature who uh, think we're just spending money recklessly to sit on the subcommittees of the Appropriations Committee. Uh, and I would say to the people in the public that it is not, there are Republicans and Democrats in that process. Um, and 
the pain of making those cuts, I think, are felt by both sides of the aisle. Now, what happens after that part of the process with the budget being negotiated, that's a different story. But it is nearly impossible at this point to, to make our judicial system, our education system, whatever the system is, work uh, simply by doing cuts. And so when I say I don't know uh, what, what the answer is in terms of what the revenue source is, part of that is because I don't know what the approach of the legislature is going to be to uh, uh, making the cuts. There are things that people are talking about. They want to put $20 million back here. They want to do some of these. Like, there's a lot of stuff people want to do, whether they're Democrat or Republican. <laughs> we don't have the we. We're talking 1.5 to 1.8. We just talked about $1.5 billion. When you do that, you, you're not taking that out of the, the full 20 billion, 19 point, whatever. You're not taking that out of the full pie. You're taking that out of the part of the pie, the 43% that is not the fixed cost. And it becomes much more difficult to do it then. Let me ask Len, Len 